Next thing that we come across with perfumery, a technique, is a thematic perfume. And this can happen, a thematic perfume is a perfume that's built around a theme which is usually a material of some sort. So last, last uh, two years ago, PFW brought out a new material they called Patchone and they created a competition for perfumers all over the world yeah, to create... Patchwood. Oh, Patchwood, sorry, Patchwood, yeah, not Patch Owned. Yeah, Patchwood. And if you wanted to join this competition, you just contacted them and they sent you 100 grams, yeah? And the person that could make the best perfume using Patchwood as the theme of the perfume, yeah, would win. I think it was $2,000 or something, yeah. Um, and your name in lights, you know? <laughs> yeah, but they did publish the formula of the person who won, yeah? So it was... But they owned all the, all the rights to the, per the formulas, obviously, that were sent to them. So it's quite a good way of uh, getting information and, yeah, and finding out how... Yeah? But that's one of the big things for a company like IFF that are coming up with materials, new materials all the time, is if they're going to promote these, they have a choice. One is they keep, to, keep it as a captive chemical. That's a secret chemical that yeah, they hold the patent for and no one else can make. And they can keep that patent for 16 to 20 years yeah, before it uh, can, be, can be copied legally by another company. Or when it comes to those at the end of the patent or immediately, they can decide that they want to launch it as a raw material. Yeah available to the general industry, yeah? but they have to explain to perfumers how they will use it. Yeah? Hedione, when it first hit the market, yeah, in Stefan Arctander's book, Stefan Arctander was a, a lecturer at Rutgers University, and he specialised in, uh, in... He wasn't really a perfumer, he was a perfume chemist. Yeah? And he, list, he, he wrote two books listing... 3, 000, over 3,000 uh, aroma chemicals and 700 essential oils. And he was like the first person really to, to bring all this information together for a perfumer. What's the name, Stefan? Stefan Arctander. And I've got those books for you. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hadn't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Arctander. And, that, and those books were written in, uh, I think the first one was in 1961, The Naturals. And 1969 for the, the Aroma Chemicals. Still the best books that have been written to date on the subject. And they still cover probably over 90% of raw materials used in perfumery. To the point that a lot of the materials in there have now disappeared from the market because of safety, because of uh, expensive essential oils no longer being produced and things like that. But you have these new, these new materials. The other thing is you get is you sometimes get somebody produces an extract. Let's say and this is one I've come across now twice since I've been in Thailand. We've had customers who have produced orchid extracts from a specific orchid, yeah? And they, they get the flowers, they extract the smell, and they say, we want to make a perfume from this. And so you say to them, how many kilos can you get to me? And they say, well, we can only, like, make 100 grams a year. <laughs> yeah? So... What, what do you do? So this is where you, you build a perfume around the theme of this, this. So first thing you'll probably do is analyze it, find out what's in there. You may be able to do it with your nose if it's a familiar type of smell. Yeah. And you take the extract, and a little bit like a, a diamond, sitting on a plinth, yeah. 
That extract on its own sitting on your hand, a little diamond sitting on your hand, what does it look like? What does a diamond look like along your hand? It's like a piece of glass. Yeah? You need something to bring it out. And so that's why you, you spend a lot of money on a setting on a diamond, yeah? To bring out the colours of the diamond. And the same way with a perfume, a thematic perfume, yeah, you build your perfume around it to shine a light on it. Yeah, and bring out the diamond, the colour. And I've worked now on two projects like that in Thailand, where somebody have launched a perfume built around an extract they made from an orchid. One was called Thai Orchid. <laughs> yeah. And the idea is, is that you know there's not much of this material, so you have to tr treat it like a precious, a precious thing and build around it. So the, the other notes in there are usually similar, but things that will highlight the, the natural um, effect of the oil. We have an oil here, Lotus, uh, Lotus Absolute, which is not available in big quantities. Yeah? And what is it made of? Which part of the lotus? Of the lotus of the, of the flower. The lotus, yeah. The part, um, I think it's just the leaves. Uh, no, the petals, the petals, sorry, the petals. Yes, yeah, yeah. Depends on the colour. Yeah, white lotus doesn't smell much, but the purple one smells, is better. Isn't that of interest? Did, did the orchid smell like something you would put in the old category? No. <laughs> Neither of the ones I worked on, they were more, one of them more went into the N, and another one went, was really green more green than anything. Yeah. So that's the idea of a thematic perfume. You build you build around your your subject.